this week on What's Up. Dubai Health Authority distributes Ramadan care packages. Find out why eating soup is an important part of breaking fast. Esmod Dubai holds its seventh annual graduation fashion show ceremony. And on Celebrity Fit, we caught up with Omar Al Duri about his international coaching stint and his fitness routine this Ramadan. I'm Zahira Variawa. Welcome to What's Up. The Dubai Health Authority, in collaboration with Dubai Charity Association, has begun the distribution of Ramadan care packages to needy patients in the Emirates. More than 250 care packages are being distributed to Hatta Hospital and about 300 to Rashid Hospital. The hospital administration are helping to distribute these packages, which include food items required to prepare meals during the holy month of Ramadan. In addition to this, the committee will provide iftar meals during the holy month of Ramadan. The meals are sponsored by the Beit Al Khair Association and the DHA staff members. The meals will be available in Dubai at Rashid and Latifa Hospital. Last year, 15,000 people benefited from these meals, while this year the committee hopes to provide iftar meals to up to 18,000 people. For this week's Ramadan food segment, nutritionist Adana al Neme will talk about the importance of eating soup when breaking fast. Hi, this is Dana. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most traditional dishes during the holy month of Ramadan. It's soup. Soup is actually, according to the food historians, is as old as the history of cooking itself. What is soup? It's normally is a combination of different various ingredients in a large pot, which can be healthy, tasty, filling, and very easy to digest. There are a lot of different types of soups internationally, like the Italian minestrone, the Chinese wonton, and the French onion soup. talking about the most popular traditional soups that are eaten at iftar during the whole month of Ramadan, as well as the health benefits. We're here at Rawabina restaurant with Chef Mohammed. Hi Chef Mohammed, how are you? Good. He cooked for us three delicious soups that are used traditionally during Ramadan. The first one is the lentil soup, which is the most traditional one. I'm going to try it first. Lentil is very high in iron and very high in protein and it gives you the feel of full very quickly which is very good for those who are trying to watch their weight because it, you can control your portion and you will eat less during iftar. The second one he made for us is vegetable soup. Vegetable soup is very important because it's very very high in fiber. As you can see here, he used a lot of broccoli um, and a lot of carrots, which is very important. The importance of fiber while you're fasting, it helps with the digestion process and it prevents you from getting bloated very quickly, which is very good, especially for women. And the third soup is the chicken and cream soup. And for those who are trying to watch their weight, they can use low-fat milk or almond milk, which for those that are especially lactose intolerant. Very good. This one is considered to be the heaviest, but it's very high in protein, so it's very good for those that train regularly. Thank you, Chef Mohammed, again for those delicious soups. And please remember to keep yourself hydrated by having a lot of soups at iftar, as it's very high in fluids. This was our episode for today. I hope you really enjoyed it, and Ramadan healthy Kareem.
The Ramadan Night Market is set to take place at the Sheikh Rashid Hall of the Dubai World Trade Center from the 2nd to the 11th of July. The market, which takes place from 8 p.m. to midnight, will offer unique shopping experiences, hosting everything from traditional food, entertainment, modern technology, automobiles and fashion. Dubbed to be one of the biggest shopping events in Ramadan, its indoor environment aims to provide more comfortable and convenient shopping experiences for the entire family. When we come back, we meet UAE expat Omar al Duri on Celebrity Fit and check out the highlights of the Esma Dubai annual fashion show. Welcome back to What's Up, I'm Zahira. For this week's Celebrity Fit, we met up with one of the UAE's well-known names in sport and fitness, Omar al -Duri. He recently made headlines when he was offered a position to coach Ghana's under-20 football team. Now that he's back in Dubai, we asked him about the experience, his other projects, plus how his fitness routine changed this Ramadan. Hi, I'm Omar Alduri. Um, I'm a health and fitness professional. I'm based in the UAE, but I was born and raised in London. I went to school in KFA, King Fahd Academy, uh, and my father is Iraqi and my mother is Saudi Arabian. I grew up struggling with uh, weight issues as a kid. Uh, I was quite overweight. I loved sports, but uh, I wasn't the best at it. I, I know how it feels to be picked last in the team when you're, uh, when you're playing football. So I went through that experience. And, it, you know, from a young age, once you set those kind of uh, standards for yourself, it's really difficult to get yourself out of it. So coming to the UAE and being originally Arabic, I wanted to you know, try and rectify the mistakes that I made and help the children at school with their campaign in terms of food and just making sure it's fun, making sure it's, it's different, it's colorful, it doesn't have to be boring. Uh, it could just be uh, a mixture of things and also the way you label them as well, which is something that, for example, growing up a burger was a burger, but nowadays you've got whole wheat bread, you've got gluten-free, uh, product so you can always make it fun for them and tasty at the same time. Well actually I've been coaching for the last 14 years now. It's been a roller coaster ride. I have my own women's football team in, in the UAE, the Platform 3 women's football team and I uh, spend a lot of my time kind of coaching and developing uh, female youth players here. I got a phone call from uh, Avram Grant who's the uh, manager of Ghana having scouted me in the UAE and in the UK with uh, a few awards that I won and, and acknowledgements that I got. And from that point, they asked me if I was interested in developing the under-20 youth team. And I, uh, I obliged with the project. I first went to Senegal to coach them for the African Nations Cup. Uh, that was definitely an experience that we enjoyed together collectively. And um, we finished third in the African Nations Cup. Uh, and we. we qualified for the World Cup in New Zealand, which was just recent, uh, and had an incredible experience. I mean, working with those players who breed and sleep and, and live football is exactly what I'm passionate about, and uh, I absolutely enjoyed every moment of it. Bringing together the aspect from fitness and the aspect from the technical side of things in football was something that I spent uh, with the players, working with them one-on-one -on -one or as a team, and together with a great staff, we, uh, we managed to to finish top of our group, a group which was very difficult, uh, Argentina, Austria and Panama. It was an incredible experience, um, very humbling, very, very overwhelming. Uh, I loved every moment of it. In Ghana, it was mainly, I was using my own body weight because I didn't have tools to, to mess around with. So um, I used different formats such as Tabata or high intensity interval training. Um, I used four or five different exercises, less rest periods and, and just continuous um, movements and patterns to try and progress where I wanted to get to. In Dubai, obviously we're blessed with having great facilities like, you know, obviously Platform 3 and just trying to mix it and match up. I think it's always important to kind of have variety. I think if you have variety, your body's guessing and if your body's guessing, 
then it has room to develop. If you get used to the same routine, then you're unlikely to adapt or develop into the goals that you want to set yourself in the beginning. So I think uh, training was definitely something you know you had to create your own self. And then also nutrition was just as important because it's a lifestyle thing. You know, it's not something where you you go for two weeks and your life changes. No, you've got to set yourself uh, a goal and also try and sustain it once you've reached it. For me, what I tend to do is I tend to train, I wouldn't say a light session, but a session, a mild session during the day. And then when it comes down to, I'll be working, or I'll be with clients or coaching, as it comes down to iftar time, which is around 7.14 when uh, the sun sets, just closer to that, just make sure I do my prayers and then I'll have a couple of dates. I will uh, definitely hydrate because your body's been obviously, you know, dehydrated the whole day. So I'll definitely hydrate. I'll probably have a soup, um, give myself a little bit of time and then go into it where I have a light meal. I'll come into the gym around 11, 11 p.m. I'll do a training session and then I'll have a proper meal around midnight. Uh, upon that, uh, that period, I won't be back into sitting down. I'll try and stay active or move around. I think creating your own environment is, is probably the key thing. That's one thing. Second thing is preparation. You know, we um, tend to go the whole day without, um, without food or water. I mean, that's nothing compared to people that struggle, not just from you know, sunrise to sunset, but their whole lives, so they don't actually indulge afterwards. We kind of have to just be very, very um, humble and, and patient in our approach. Um, I mean, as you just saw earlier, I was training myself and just trying not to set myself uh, an obstacle in the way, just trying to create my own environment, train, eat properly. As soon as you break fast, you know, have a few dates, balance your sugar levels, um, take your time, have a soup. If you need to train, you can train and then you have a proper meal afterwards full of fiber and carbohydrates and protein and vegetables, um, you know, stacking up on that. Uh, and you find your body's adapting to it because your appetite shrinks naturally. So just feeding it, remember that it spent the whole day without food and water. So it requires to be replenished the right way. Esmod Dubai held its annual graduation fashion show ceremony for the seventh year in a row. Young designers presented their personal fashion collection on the runway to an enthusiastic crowd at Wafi Mall. Firas was at the show to give us the highlights. Hi, we're here at the Esmo Dubai Fashion Show. We're gonna see the latest creation of up and coming designers. I am Firas, I'm gonna be your fashion insider for this evening. Can you tell us what's happening here? Yes, so tonight is the seventh graduation of ISMO Dubai, which is the French Fashion Institute. And tonight, uh, most of the third year students, which is 16 students, are getting graduated wow. tonight wow. with their final collection. Can you tell us about your collection? It was all inspired by racing theme. So everything from fabrics to the collection, designs, everything is inspired from racing itself. The tires, the road tracks, everything is from there. Yalda, actually, today is my favorite fashion designer in s -Mode. Hi, Yalda. Hi, thank you so much. That Yalda, can you tell us about your collection and about this great show? Okay, well, my collection is called Royal G, and it's about hip-hop and nightlife and luxury. It's Dubai to me, because Dubai is, the nightlife is all glitz and glam. It's about showing off, but I wanted to put a bit of, like, 
the gangsterness into it, the hip hop into it. So that's what my collection is about. Your show was great, it was amazing. Can you tell me uh, the inspiration from where you get the idea to do that? I love dance. I grew up dancing ballet and hip hop. So that was my inspiration, it's my personality. Hi, I'm here with the fashion designer Rana. She won today award from Haute Couture. Hi, Rana. Hi. Rana, can you tell us about your collection? My collection is about uh, infinity, love. Uh, inspired by my uh, personality that I believe uh, if you have love in your life, there is no any limit, uh, limit in your life and then you will continue and you will give all your body for finish and reach that. There is no limit. The outcome of today was very satisfying. It was a, a lot of excitement, a lot of good things happened. This time everything went very smooth. No model issue, no student issue. Today was just perfect. I hope everybody enjoy it and just see you next year. It was another great moment from S Mode, and we cannot wait to see more from these brilliant designers. Here's Rosina to tell us what's up with your favorite shows this week on Physique TV. Hi, I'm Rosina, and here are the highlights this week on Physique TV. Sunday, get ready to learn a healthy breakfast with Chef Adrian and nutritionist Zoe. The thing about this recipe is it's so easy. We're going to use dried fruit, but you can use any dried fruit that you want. So I've got some figs, I've got some apples, I've got some blueberries. I'd love you to just roughly chop up half a cup. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two cups of my oats straight in the bowl. So half a cup of each, each one? So the no, apple... all together, okay, half a beautiful. cup. Right. Yeah, so it's not that much in it, because the other thing that we're going to sweeten this with, because I do know you like your sweet. I do, I do love it sweet. There we go. We're actually going to use the agave. So the agave is not only going to sweeten it, it's going to bind these little clusters together. There we go. And then what I've done is I've preheated the oven to 150 degrees, so it's not, not too hot. And we're probably going to put them in there for about 15 minutes, and then we'll pull them out, and I'll show you a couple of different ways that you can use them as well. So I've let my clusters cool and we're going to eat them. <laughs> Don't laugh. I've, I've got my bowl here. Can I have one of them? Because I yeah, will give sure. it a go. There we go. So I think it's nice to have it with a little bit of milk. Any type of milks are fine. And I thought some banana. This and more recipes coming up this week on Good Chef, Bad Chef. Tim and Adam are real rule breakers. We never know what will happen next when they're in charge. Hello and welcome to Red Bull Clipsomaniacs, the show that brings you the very best free sports... Kendall! Kendall! Kendall, what? what are you doing? I'm just working on the old clip generator, giving it a little tune-up. Right, OK, well, you know we're supposed to be doing a show, don't you? Oh, right, OK, I'll come in. Yeah. Why don't you tell everyone what's coming up anyway? OK, get cleaned up. Right. OK, this is what's in store for you guys today.
This Sunday on Cryptomaniacs, watch out for what they have in store for you in another episode filled with adrenaline. The countdown has started. I'm sure all of you MMA fans are excited for the next One Championship fight card. This July, Physique TV will broadcast Dynasty of Champions. Of course, our MMA experts, Rio and Ali, will deliver their blow-by-blow commentary on the fight. For our full schedule, check out the Physique TV website. Again, here are this week's top stories. Dubai Health Authority distributes Ramadan care packages. Eating soup is an important part of breaking fast. Esmod Dubai holds its seventh annual graduation fashion show ceremony. And on Celebrity Fit, we caught up with Omar al Duri about his international coaching stint and his fitness routine this Ramadan. Thanks for joining me today. If you have any comments or suggestions, connect with us on our social media pages. I'm Zahira Variawa. Healthy Ramadan Kareem.